I V M. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories, India's very own travel podcast, where each week we share the journey of travelers in their own words and relive their experiences with you, our listeners. Hi guys, I'm your host Faiza, and today's episode is a milestone in its real sense. Well, today is the first anniversary of the Musafir Stories. It has been a year since we began our quest of collecting and sharing travel stories. It's been a very memorable journey so far. A special thanks to all our guest travelers and our listeners. We are what we are because of your support. Thank you for all the encouragement and the motivation and the lovely messages that you guys keep sending us. They keep us going. And what better way to celebrate our anniversary than sitting back, listening and getting lost in the mountains with the mountains' favorite child. Our guest traveler today is Divyakshi or Dipsi Gupta who blogs under the handle quirkywanderer.com. The quirky wanderer is a door lover, a story weaver, a travel writer, mountain lover, part-time social media consultant and a full-time dotting aunt. Vyakshi's work has been featured on NGT India, Lonely Planet, Jet Wings, Make My Trip, Holidify, Stay Right and so many more publications. Well, sit back and enjoy as the Vyakshi takes us wandering to her happy place. With that introduction, I would love to welcome the Vyakshi from the blog Quirky Wanderer. Hi the Vyakshi, welcome to the Musafir Stories. Hi Feza, thank you so much for having me here. Pleasure is all ours, Divyakshi. Uh, the introduction that I gave about you is quite short. Why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners a little about yourself? Also, when did you start traveling? When did the travel bug bite you? So, um, I think travel came to me at a very very young age. Mm-hmm. I really don't remember when was the you know I cannot like trace back my first trip. Mm-hmm. I have like no memories of a first trip as such because um I, it came it is it you know it was actually passed down by my parents to me okay and uh, a very few people know that uh, my parents are actually my biggest source of inspiration when it comes to travel because wow. my my mom is a crazy road trip junkie <laughs> as far as i remember mm-hmm. like as we were, when we were kids we used to be on road trips like for 20 25 days wow it's amazing back to back road trips and my mom used to like just love road trips she still does uh-huh. and we were like just dumped into the car and we were like taken like from bombay to punjab bombay <laughs> to himachal and uh, so i just grew up with this love of travel and exploration and i think it, i have to attribute it also to my grandparents mm-hmm. so uh, when i was a kid and you know we all like like all kids of 90s and late 80s we were always we used to always look forward to summer vacations because we used to actually go and stay with our grandparents Absolutely, yeah. and uh, my grandparents used to stay in punjab mm-hmm. then they shifted to a very small town in himachal oh, okay so i used to actually look forward to those vacations because uh, we you know they meant long walks by the river yamuna oh, wow on pebbles mm-hmm. and uh, you know with litchi trees and mango trees and oh my uh, god and actually you know uh, uh, that's when i got my first brush with falling in love with nature mm, amazing so, with mountains and the company of mountains and this was the time when i used to read a lot okay like as a kid i uh-huh. used to read enid blyton i used to read oh. uh, all yeah. sorts of those and travel became fantasy because you know it was a camping adventure mm-hmm. mystery and all of that so that's how i think travel just got embedded i think that is the time i you know fell in love with this entire idea of exploration mm-hmm. and storytelling as well amazing i would uh, request all our listeners to please go ahead and check out divyakshi's blog it's called the quirky wanderer it's amazing and she has this knack of storytelling very differently and very beautifully uh, divyakshi why don't you tell our listeners a little about your blog and a quite nice name also quirky wanderer i love the name yeah 
thank you feza <laughs> i think I, I, not many people know before like like long form of writing i was uh, i i actually started writing poems oh wow at the age of 9 amazing <laughs> I think it was uh, just an outcome of my reading mm-hmm. and my love for nature. Mm-hmm. So one day I was sitting in a park, mm-hmm. uh, very close to my house, and that's where I penned my first poem called "Butterflies in the Park." Wow! <laughs> Quite a confession because not uh, like uh, people on social media do not know this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so uh, uh, blogging came much later in 2005. I was bored after my. HSC exams mm-hmm. and I thought why not you know have this online diary and you know pen your thoughts that's when blogging happened actually Amazing. photography yeah. came much much later mm-hmm. it came 2009 I think when my my sister gifted me a camera oh wow okay <laughs> when photography happened so it was always like I was all it was always poetry mm-hmm. then blogging my first blog was called scraps of bread oh wow <laughs> I don't that's know why that's very interesting name but, Yeah. So that's where I got all my friends, the network, the blogger network uh-huh. of friends and stuff. And then one day I decided, after like almost uh, seven years of blogging, okay. I realized that you know I can't have a mashup of everything on my blog on scraps of bread. So it was travel, it was writing, it was poetry, everything on one blog. Uh-huh. So one day I thought, why not you know give a new identity right. to only travel and photography. where quirky wanderer was born. Oh. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think your blog speaks for it as well. It's got amazing and beautiful pictures and beautiful stories as well. He, I mean, I would I was just literally lost in your blog. It's that beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> So we are actually going on with the Musafir story tradition, where our uh, guest takes our listeners and us to a destination. Where are you going to take us today? So I'm going to take you to my happy place. Wow, which one? I got <laughs> my happy place, and because it's uh, of course my favorite state in India, that's okay. Himachal. Wow, because uh, that's where travel was actually the seed of travel was sown in my heart. So I had always been to Himachal and a lot of regions in Himachal. Mm-hmm. There, there was one region that I had not been to. Okay. That was Kinnor. So Kinnor is a district in Himachal, mm-hmm. and uh, it is basically comprising of uh, towns like Kalpa, Sangla. Okay. There are villages like Chitkul, Batseri. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. Kinnor was a place that even my parents have not been to. I wanted to do this journey, and there was a particular picture that I saw mm-hmm. almost like ten years ago. Okay. was a tunnel you know a tunnel cut out of the mountains wow okay and uh, i had seen that tunnel and i so wanted to visit okay. it just for the thrill of it okay wow. so there there are roads like this in india uh-huh. so, you know the the adventurer in me was like no this road trip needs to be done so only a question of when and how right yeah yeah great so how many days itinerary was this how many days trip was this Uh, Faiza, this was two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Oh, two weeks. Okay. That's yeah, perfect. because of the and it can. It's not like you know, cannot cannot be done um, in a shorter span of time. Okay. But uh, we took it slow. Okay. Great. So I was introduced uh, like uh, to this trip by Doreen. Doreen is okay. a tour leader, okay. and she takes these um, nature and wildlife enthusiasts. Oh, wow. So, uh on trips okay so her trips are not going to be about uh you know where you can shop where you can party and stuff okay okay they are like niche groups okay of, uh you know like minded people who love nature who love responsible travel okay and uh, she's a trekker herself wow amazing i couldn't have asked for better company I know. for yeah totally that's, that's great so where did you guys start off and um You've got in touch with Doreen, and your trip is all planned. Please tell us about it. How did you start off? Ah, uh, yeah. So the trip was planned beforehand because mm-hmm. Doreen has been to the region before. Okay. And she was warning us that we need to be prepared about the roads. Oh wow! Okay. So and why is that? We were going to travel on the NH twenty two, which is okay. considered to be one of the most dangerous highways. in the world i know i know i've i've seen a documentary i think online where there are these truck drivers who drive to crazy Correct. destinations and i and his 22 was one of it right oh, wow much better now <laughs> uh-huh. uh, that's what dorian said mm-hmm. earlier like there were no railings oh my god and there was a sure drop oh, so Lord. Uh, 
uh, so she was like warning us that you know this trip is not for the faint hearted and people who like you know look down and start screaming and right. stuff right so we started in uh, we started from chandigarh okay. we flew from mumbai to chandigarh mm-hmm. and we started from chandigarh and we took it slow okay so because the distances may not be uh, you know quite uh, the distances are like must be 90 kilometers 100 kilometers right. but because of the route mm-hmm. the time taken was much higher oh okay so we thought let's you know uh, why don't we do these pit stops okay. so we took a stop ahead of shimla because shimla is too touristy right right hmm. too too touristy and we did not want to spend the night there so ahead of shimla mm-hmm. is a small place called fagu okay that was our stop for the night all right we stayed in the himachal tourism hotel okay i think it was uh, apple blossom yeah apple blossom wow okay we stayed there uh-huh. and the uh, himachal tourism hotels i think are impeccable i think no other tourism i think maybe uh, mp tourism mm-hmm. i would like to give that to them but himachal tourism wherever we stayed the places were so spick and span wow okay amazing and the stay was just so comfortable wow that's really nice to hear right sorry one question that we actually before we go ahead did you guys prepare anything with respect to uh, packing your clothes and all that in particular yes yes yeah, so maybe yeah, you could tell the listeners a little about that as well please so um uh, she had already told us like dorin had already told us that okay. it's going to be extremely cold all oh, right and we were visiting it in the apple season that is uh, the end of september oh. and the first week of october oh okay okay this is winter just setting in all th- i think just yeah setting. and <laughs> the fields of buckwheat were like you know uh, in abundance oh. it was the season of buckwheat <laughs> and also the season for apples wow <laughs> first time i had i had actually seen apples on trees <laughs> and is such a site that if i would like to recommend people to go to kinnor uh-huh. like people do visit it even in you know may mm-hmm. june july mm-hmm. if you really really want to get the flavor of kinnor mm-hmm. you have to have to visit it in the apple season mm-hmm. it, so uh, yeah so for packing she told us that obviously uh-huh. sangla is going to be very cold i think okay. it, it was almost like 3 or 4 degrees at night oh wow okay especially when it's when it rains mm uh-huh. uh you know in uh, rains in the mountains are pretty unpredictable mm-hmm. so when it rains it gets colder okay. so we were told to take a lot of uh, woolens and stuff okay mm-hmm. and apart from that i there was not no like, no such uh, you know a uh, special packing requirement like right. it's a backpacking trip Correct. so we Correct. took cars mm-hmm. there were three novas and you know we were like because uh, uh buses are an option of course himachal tourism buses for people who mm-hmm. wish travel by road i right. mean through buses right bus is a great option because the himachal tourism drivers are perhaps one of the best in the country yeah, yeah. so there are with the roads and all that perfect right. yeah right. so buses ply from chandigarh to kinnor to shimla and beyond okay so we started from chandigarh we went to fagu spent the night there mm-hmm. the next day we left early morning from fagu because fagu there's nothing much that you can do per se it okay. was just a pit stop mm-hmm. and then we moved ahead to sarahan Okay. We reached Sarahan is a Sar- so we have not entered Kinnor yet. This is in the Shimla district. All right, all right. Okay. So uh, we reached Sarahan by afternoon like post post lunch. We mm-hmm. had lunch in Rampur. Okay. Rampur Busher is another it's like uh, you know it's like like the biggest trade area. So there are a lot of markets. So people who wish to buy like you know right. Himachali stuff, spices, achar. Mm, wow. Okay. So all that they can buy either in Rampur, Rampur. Okay. or in Rekongpio. Okay. Rekongpio Rekong is near Kalpa. Okay. Now Sarahan is a place where I was like, okay, what can you do possibly in Sarahan? But mm-hmm. there was just so much that we saw. Huh. First thing is we were staying in again Himachal Tourism Shrikhand Hotel. Okay. Which was. just opening up to the mountains oh. so we of sikan mahadev oh, like wow that's, that's the range mountain range uh-huh. we got the we got a classic view of the mountains from there amazing ha huh? 5 minutes away from the famed bhima kali temple oh okay did you guys get the chance to go there 
Yes, I went there twice. Wow. Okay. And the architecture of the temple. So I have a pension for architecture. I love architecture. Uh-huh. And the kind of uh, architecture that you get in Himachal of the temples mm-hmm. is very different. So there is a lot of wood. All right. Okay. A lot of stone. Oh. Okay. So this entire thing of wood and stone, you know, it's like fairy tale architecture. Like somebody had asked me, what is fairy tale architecture? And I... <laughs> I really didn't know how to explain it. Uh-huh. Maybe it just came out of a fairy tale. <laughs> so pretty, so gorgeous. Right. And uh, something that I'd never seen before. So okay. has massively beautiful door, oh. like massively beautiful door, silver door, oh. carved with a great knocker. Amazing. And I was in awe of the temple and the vibes, of course, because yeah. the temple was just so powerful. So it's dedicated uh, to Goddess Durga. Okay. And I decided to come back in the early in the morning uh-huh. when everybody was snoozing. I thought, just let me come for the Aarti. Right. You know, because the priest asked me to. Uh-huh. And uh, it was something else. There were cymbals, there were drums. Wow. And the entire atmosphere was just so magical, so so full of positive vibes. Mm, amazing. So, uh, the aarti happens in the morning mm-hmm. but for that I have to tell you that when we reached Sarahan okay. Dory told us let's go to the pheasantry okay. where we could see the uh, birds All right. Huh. I thought it's going to be like any other you know uh, I didn't ve- quite have very high hopes from it okay. so I was like oh my god birds are going to be in the cage I don't want to go and all of that huh. and she said come along uh-huh. you know and when Dorian says something I just trust her with eyes <laughs> So I followed her and it was, we actually discovered a valley of flowers inside Sarahan. Wow. So there were so many sporadic flowers mushrooming out of nowhere. Uh-huh. And trust me, it was like a spread of pink and purple, which I had never seen before. Oh. There were Himalayan balsams. Uh-huh. There were so many flowers like yellow, pink, and the whole site was so beautiful. And it's not at all crowded. So this is this place is like this is the walk to the pheasantry that we were taking. All right. And when I reached there, I actually saw that how well they have preserved the pheasantry. That's true. So yeah. they are not like small cages. Mm-hmm. They are like huge, uh, you know, enclosures for oh, the birds. That's, that's where I saw the Himalayan monal, mm-hmm. the great monal, and the tragopan. Wow. And it's very very colorful birds. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. So that was Sarahan. You have to have to spend time in Sarahan at least one night where you can, you know, see these things. They're not very far. Right? And it's best if you stay in this hotel because mm-hmm. you can't get a prime location. Sounds so, beautiful. Uh-huh. And then I was excited the next day that I'm going to finally, finally enter Kinor. <laughs> so we said yes. goodbye to Sarahan. Uh-huh. And we entered, like, you know, there was a there was a gate which said, welcome to Kinor. Kinor, oh. Okay. And that's where the road started. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so you have these rugged mountains, okay? Uh-huh. Absolutely jagged mountains on the right side. Okay. And curvy roads. Oh, God. And like a sure drop down. So uh, the river uh, the river Satluj uh-huh. is with you throughout. Okay. Most, you know, from Punjab itself. Uh-huh. It's with you. So it's flowing and uh, along mm-hmm. and by the valley. And then you're on the on these curves. And then there is a stretch called the Taranda stretch. Okay, Taranda stretch. So this is very interesting. There's a temple mm-hmm. dedicated to Taranda Devi. Okay. So she is supposed to be the guardian of the driver's oh, wow. stretch. Mm, that's so beautiful. every driver that passes that stretch uh, takes her blessing. Actually, yeah, she he he has to halt and it's mandatory for them. So they mm-hmm. halt for two minutes. Uh-huh pay homage to her and then continue their journey because they feel that she is the protector. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so even our drivers, uh-huh. so I have to give it out to them uh-huh. because they have been like amazing throughout the journey. Oh, wow. and, um, uh, so, uh, Pavan huh. was the leader of the pack. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Sanjeev Kumar, lucky. Yeah, oh, so okay. these three were the drivers and they were they were amazing with what they did. Uh, so that was the stretch. And the Taranda stretch is where you get the tunnel. Oh, the tunnel that you had seen long back. Correct. Oh, that wow. is where you see the tunnel. Uh-huh. So you have to cross the tunnel and then uh, uh, the journey continues till Sangla. Right. So how are the roads? Are they still, I mean, are they in good condition or uh, uh, is it too scary to drive? 
on them? Uh, it is not too scary to drive on them, but mm-hmm. you require a tremendous amount of focus and experience. Okay, okay. Yeah, because there have been uh, many, many accidents, of course. And more than accidents, it's the la- uh, the landslides. Oh, Lord. Okay, okay, okay. So after the Taranda stretch, there's a place where rivers Baspa and Satluj, they meet. Oh, wow. Okay. And that place is called Karsham. That is where there is the hydroelectric pla- plant. Uh-huh. And because of these uh, projects, mm-hmm. see, they take a toll and there are landslides. So, there are places where you can actually see the stones tumbling down. Oh, Lord. Okay, that is scary. And if you if you are not so lucky, mm-hmm. um, there are times when Pavan, our driver, had mm-hmm. told us that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you can be stuck for days. Oh, my God. Oh, has there been yeah. any incident where he's stuck as well? Or yes, yes, <gasps> yes. Oh, yes. my God. He was giving us an incident that happened with, with Doreen uh, when, uh, I mean, he was with Doreen. Uh-huh. And stuck for two days waiting for uh, you know people to clear oh my god well, that is scary and it gets it it really gets to uh, everybody's nerves but that is where i learned the power of patience no, and no. i have to give it to these guys the amount of patience mm-hmm. the amount of endurance that they have tolerance levels are so high which we city folks will never ever imbibe absolutely <laughs> so we read Sangla and we read Sangla our tents. So we stayed in Kinner camps. Okay. Wow. This is one place that I would absolutely recommend people to stay uh-huh. at because this is just so beautiful. So there were the mountains. Uh-huh. We reached uh, we reached Kinner camps somewhere in the afternoon. Okay. And uh, we could hear the river Baspa flow. Oh. It was like roaring. The, the campsite is all is like two minutes away from the river bank. Lord, wow! <laughs> and we were like with with the other trees and you know, uh, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Uh-huh. And uh, we stayed in these tents. Okay, so these tents are not like like your trekking tents. Okay. You have a bed. It's like a fully furnished. Oh wow! Okay. Tent. So it's a luxury tent. Yeah. And what about the restrooms and all that? Are they're, they... all, they're all attached. So that is extreme luxury, basically. They're Swiss tents. Oh, okay. So this okay. place is run by a play, uh, by a person called uh, Dalip Negi. Okay. And ag- again, hats off to these guys. The the dining tent is separate. Mm-hmm. And it was almost resembling like a scene out of the Flintstones. I will have to give you these, uh, you know, give you these examples because this will get the place alive in your heads. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the beauty of the place was the hospitality. So in my head, I uh-huh. thought, uh-huh. such a place, oh my God, food will be such an issue. I know. Yeah. That's the first thing you think, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I was about to ask you that, was food okay? I think it was the best food I've ever had in my life. And oh it's not, my God. It's not, I mean, I'm not like, you know, exaggerating. Uh-huh. It was just so wonderful. And it came out of one small kitchen tent. <laughs> Wow. And that is where, so I call him the magician. The cook was, his uh-huh. name is Tulsi. Uh-huh. I used to call him Tulsi Bhaiya. Uh-huh. And Tulsi used to like weave magic on the table. <laughs> there were like varieties of Chinese, Indian, I don't know what all. Uh-huh. And I was like, did this come from this tent? <laughs> that is another example of you know they have they can give all sorts of excuses that you know we are limited on resources right, right. and this far off place this is not like you know in in the main town of sangla okay. it's a little ahead of sangla uh-huh. so they have all the excuses that they are you know short on resources right, but right. they did a fabulous job and the best thing that he did was he he made a buckwheat cake for us oh my god the yeah, other cake looks it's, Yummy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd have to tell our listeners, please go ahead, head on to the Vyakshi's blog and check out the pictures. That cake looked so good and I've been having cake cravings since then. <laughs> and, and he was so humble and nice and he made the cake for us. Oh. And I, I was like, okay, this is like a dream. Wow. So um, from Sangla, from Kina Camps, mm-hmm. so he took us to the apple orchards in Batseri. Oh, okay. Huh. Batseri was a small walk from the Kina Camps. It's it's walkable. Okay. It's like a one or a two hour walk. Mm-hmm. So that's when we went to Batseri, and Batseri is one village. Okay. I think it is one of the cleanest villages I have ever been to. Wow. Okay. Not a speck of dirt. Oh, amazing. 
things it's like nothing and the the there are like you know uh, you can actually see houses mm-hmm. and uh, the 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 architecture that i was talking about that's where we visited the badri narayan temple okay so batseri and sangla mm-hmm. they are very famous for fulaich okay oh what fulaich. is fulaich fulaich is a festival that happens in september all right where basically people uh, you know get together they make apricot wine Ooh. and uh, they are basically they go and uh, you know worship the deity their deity in the badri narayan temple temple okay so fulaich is a festival it's like an annual festival for the kinoris all right all right so this yeah. happens around september as well I mean, yes, September. Okay. September first week. So okay. we missed the festival, uh-huh. but we visited the temple, Badri Narayan Temple. Uh-huh. And what about the Badri Narayan Temple? Is that again the architecture is beautiful, uh-huh. and you can actually see all religions carved on it, oh. symbols of all religions. Wow, oh, that's quite secular. And yeah, it's very secular, yeah. and you can see, uh, you know, uh, you can see Christianity, you can see Sikhism, Judaism, oh. Islam. Wow, everything carved. and when i asked one of the local villagers there and he was like you know god is one so oh. we you know want to just have hindu or buddhist influences right yeah so the temple is dedicated to lord badri narayan mm-hmm. form of lord vishnu okay. and we so we took a walk around uh, around the temple and mm-hmm. in the village and we lost our way oh actually good okay because that we lost our way and we reached uh we reached the source of the river baspa oh wow <laughs> so beautiful because we were walking through the forest uh-huh. and we were you never know, pedal pathways okay and we reached the source of river baspa that's where we saw goats mountain goats and the whole scene looked just so beautiful oh. so batseri gives you views of the mountains uh-huh. it gives you a feel of the village life the kinori village life right It's very quaint, yes, and uh, of course there are orchards, apple mm-hmm. orchards. Oh my God! Did you get a chance to like go and eat some apples? So uh, the leap was very very helpful, okay. and he bought us apples because oh. obviously we would not go. I was very tempted to pluck. It was too rude oh. to do it. I mean, back, back then as a kid, we did it for mangoes and lychees. Right, right. <laughs> It was very rude to do it now. Uh-huh. So the leap got us apples from the orchards. Oh, yummy! So that was our evening walk by the river bus pa. Uh-huh. And the next day we went to Chitkul. Okay. So Chitkul okay. is one hour ahead of mm-hmm. Sangla. Okay. And it is the last village on the uh, highway, the Indo-Tibet highway. All right. Okay. So last Indian village, mm-hmm. basically. From there, the uh, China border starts. Oh, okay. Chitkul, yeah. So Chitkul is uh, one place. I think it's on thirteen thousand feet. Oh, thirty mm-hmm. thousand feet, and that is where we we went down to uh, the river Baspa, dipped our feet, sat mm-hmm. on rocks. Wow! I think I had the most uh, amazing time ever. It was therapy. Oh, amazing! And all along, all along, we could see buckwheat uh, fields, and we could also see berries, oh. different types of Himalayan berries. Okay. and beautiful beautiful trees oh it was it is one of i think the most uh, picturesque drives i know i just feel that you've gone into like a movie or a postcard i think it's, it's so beautiful correct mm-hmm. and this is where i met a lot of israeli people so they were actually mm-hmm. sitting down and sketching the scenery wow very peaceful very very peaceful so that was chitkul and then we came back from chitkul mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, so sangla per se uh, if you have to like you know uh, uh, talk about experiences in sangla mm-hmm. i would say a day trip to chitkul okay yeah and also there is something called as the kamru fort of oh, kamru fort yeah that's okay. in sangla okay. that is actually basically uh, you know a temple it's mm-hmm. a there's a temple a kamakya devi temple inside the fort uh-huh. it's climbed it's a one hour climb uh-huh. from the main town of sangla you can actually see the kamru fort you know from the uh, town from the, from the town you can see right. it from the town it's perched on a cliff okay and you can see the architecture so it's a very very old fort and mm. it belonged to the the rulers the erst erstwhile rulers okay marshal 
Mm-hmm. And uh, you can visit the temple there. It's a Kamakya Devi temple. It's the same deity which is there in Assam. Oh. The Kamakya uh, Devi, you must have heard. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's in Assam. Uh-huh. Yeah. Same deity which is even there. Wow. So I I was wondering at the connections. I'm like, yeah. wow. Who would think this? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that is also an option that people can do apart yes. from a walk in Batsari. Okay. And of course, doing nothing. I mean, at such a place, you would prefer doing nothing and just yeah. being lost there. You know, it's so nice. I would just prefer to like take a book there, sit, and keep looking at the beautiful it's actually, view. It's actually a writer's and a reader's retreat. Oh. I would, I would, I would call it that because there is no sound except the sound of the river Baspa. Yeah, oh. that was Sangla, and of course, I didn't want to leave it, I but know. I'm very, very curious <laughs> about what is going to happen next. Uh-huh. And we were going to Kalpa next. Wow. Okay. Kalpa. <laughs> Kalpa is Kalpa is a little more commercial as a town. All right. As to Sangla, mm-hmm. it's bigger as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next day we left for Kalpa. Okay. And Kalpa is where we 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 saw. So you know when we were approaching Kalpa, I was hearing these stories mm-hmm. of Kinnar Kailash Mountains, and everyone had a story. And I was like, why are people so excited about this mountain range? Mm-hmm. and uh, we reached this hotel called the grand shambala okay it's it's actually synonymous to home for me oh that's it's nice very oh. very few hotels uh-huh. very few hotels i've traveled to so many hotels so many places but never have i felt at home i could actually walk in my pjs <laughs> <laughs> middle of the night i go up and down like it's my house <laughs> Uh, and the people were so friendly uh, i found walking in the lobby and it's past 12 uh-huh. they'll actually come up to me and ask me if i want an additional um, you know uh, additional helping of gulab jamun oh lord wow i'm hungry now and the best part was uh-huh. it's not like they knew i'm a blogger blogger per se and i was getting treatment they did not know that i'm going to i'm going to write about them or right. you know, I am a travel blogger or I'm a writer I may review it right right the same treatment would was meted out to everybody in the audience group that's good and the same treatment is meted out to anyone who goes there and that wow. is what makes the place so special that's amazing that's and it's run by Prithvi Prithvi Negi okay so Prithvi is an uh, amazing person I remember the first time I met him I told him can I please pluck apples from your orchard <laughs> And he looked at me and he laughed and he said, "We will arrange an apple picking session for you." Oh my God! Did they do that? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was dancing about like a kid. Oh God! Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> dancing nice. about like a kid, like you know, know, little red riding hood, gone crazy. I think like I was year to year. Yeah. And uh, there was this guy from uh-huh. hotel. Mm-hmm. Name is Ankit. Okay. I'm actually giving names uh, because I want these guys to be known to the yeah, world. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And it feels nice. I mean, when you hear these names, it feels more connected. So Ankit so was like looking at me and laughing as if this girl has lost it. He <laughs> taught me how to actually, you know, uh-huh. pluck an apple oh. so that I don't pluck the entire branch down <laughs> of my excitement. Right. And the apples were just so juicy because. Oh, I th- I don't think we get those apples in Bombay because when we say kinori apples okay uh-huh. I think I think we're not getting that at all we're getting the last quality lot in Bombay Oh lord and okay so this is exported uh-huh. So the apples were bigger than my hand and they were just so juicy that once you take a bite the uh-huh. juice actually flows down to your hand Oh my god <laughs> okay, I've never eaten that- an apple like that and that was like Oh my god it was like the perfect outing ever yeah. so uh, prithvi was very very kind to arrange such tours for us uh-huh. we, we actually visited a kinori shawl factory okay kinori shawls have a very different kind of a print uh-huh. if you see it online you can uh-huh. uh, you, you will also see it on my blog uh-huh. so you have this checked pattern okay like okay. black and white checks like uh-huh. a check uh-huh. and it have beautiful embroidery on the sides oh wow and Kinori shawls can be very very expensive. The authentic Kinori shawl can mm-hmm. go up to sixteen thousand and beyond. Oh, oh. But the print is just so pretty. Right. It looks very contemporary with the black and white, black and white uh-huh. checks and uh, the embroidery. So we actually saw the Kinori shawls being made. Okay. I think one of the best experiences I've had in Kalpa was visiting the juice factory. Okay, that's nice. It was it Apple Juice Factory? Apple Juice Factory. Oh. 
saw apple juice being made uh-huh. with preservatives. Oh, that's great! And wow. I interacted with the local ladies, and I was just taking their pictures. So this is uh-huh. a very funny incident, and they were like, "You're going to take our pictures. You're going to put it in magazines or papers or what? <laughs> You're not going to get it. You know, Aww. you just commented." And that's when I was like, you know, it struck me. I said, yes, that's so true. We we click people's pictures, Correct. and they never get it. That's But when true. we get ourselves clicked from somebody, mm-hmm. we are actually pressurizing the person to send our pictures, please, to us and stuff. Huh. So that's when I was like, I took down the number of the manager, okay. the email ID, and the number. Uh-huh. And um, I when I came back to Bombay, I printed those pictures, those uh-huh. photo- photographs, uh-huh. and I cleared it for the ladies. Oh, that's so kind of you. I actually sent it so oh, that you know, nice. I promised. I said, "No, I'm going to send your pictures back to you guys." Huh. And they were all posing, and you know, they were just <laughs> happy and smiling and giggling. I think that was quite an experience. It was one of the most memorable experiences I've had. I know. The other one was when I used to hijack Ankit. Huh. So that, like, after his, uh, you know, uh, duty was done in the kitchen, right. we. As a group, we used to tell him, "Please join us for you know, uh, uh-huh. take us to places in Kalpa." Uh-huh. So he took us to uh, tiny houses where Kinori jewelry was being made. Oh, okay. That's That interesting. was the experience. Kinori jewelry is made out of silver. Huh. Unlike other uh, silversmiths, where you go and readily you'll get stuff. Right. It's it's not the same. You have to give silver to them. Oh, okay. Okay, you have to uh-huh. give silver to them, and then they will make customized, you know, jewelry for you. Uh-huh. And the jewelry is just so pretty, so pretty. It's it's uh, if you see a Kinori bride uh-huh. picture, you'll see her like you know, her he- right from her head to toe, the kind of jewelry she wears. It's okay. very very authentic. It's something very different. Ooh. Yeah. So that is where we saw uh, the, this jewelry, this bridal jewelry being made. Uh-huh. There's a place called the Suicide Point, which is very, which is very famous, mm-hmm. and I think you would have seen it quite a number of times on Instagram. It's like that Instagram point. Oh, and I think, I mean, there is a picture of it on your blog as well, and it is scary. It is really, really scary. I was, I was standing on the edge. Oh God! My eyes were going berserk. I know. Like, I was like, no, I just want to take a picture. Oh God! <laughs> Onto my braid. <laughs> When I was doing it, but it was uh, it gave me goosebumps. I have to tell you that. So all this while, when mm-hmm. I was collecting experiences in Kalpa, mm-hmm. Kinnar Kailash Mountains, the site of the Kinnar Kailash Mountains doesn't leave you. Okay. It's there, and uh, there is this uh, shivling, which mm-hmm. is apparently a chalk-like structure that huh? you can see. Huh? It's like a chalk perched on one of the hills. Okay. Everybody had a story for Kinnar Kailash. You know, it's basically a it's a trek as well as a pilgrimage. Oh, it would be quite difficult, right? It's a very very diff- difficult trek, oh. and it's full of boulders. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah, and uh, I used to see the mountains, and you can see the Kinnar Kailash from Grand Shambhala. You can oh. see it from your rooms. Oh wow! So I was in the first floor, and there's oh. this attic that you have on the fifth floor. There's a beautiful library. Okay. Amazing library huh. in the hotel, and uh-huh. you can take a book and you can sit in the attic facing the mountain range, and you, you know you can relax. Oh my God, this place is beautiful. Okay. Yes, they also have they have a, a cafe now. Huh. There was a yoga room which was inaugurated when we were there. Uh-huh. <laughs> we did yoga facing the mountains. Oh Lord, it's a everything dream come true. It, it, everything is made in wood. It's very quiet and very peaceful. Uh-huh. So we were at this. Uh, uh, so whenever I used to see the mountains, I used to be like, everybody has a story. Huh. Will I also have a story? <laughs> I only have pictures of the Kinnar Kailash. Huh. And then one evening, huh. I think we we had gone out to Rogi Village and we came back. Uh-huh. Everyone was tired, huh. and uh, Yashpal, the person at the reception, had right. given uh-huh. Wi-Fi passwords to everyone. <laughs> so yes. I was sitting in the lobby, uh-huh. and uh, I, that's where I met a biker who was okay. sitting right next to me. Huh. Um, his name is Anil Nair, and we got into a conversation. And he was on his way to Gaza. And suddenly, during the conversation, he told me, huh. uh, "You know, would you uh, would you get up early in the morning huh. uh, if you're a morning person?" I said, "Yes, I am a morning person." He said, "Why don't you go to the attic at six o'clock? You'll see the most spectacular show on earth." So I was like, "Okay." I, I, I was just very curious and a little taken aback, you know, because. 
we were just five minutes into the conversation and he said this and huh. uh, it was almost like a prophecy. Huh. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, yeah, I'll I'll see it. And uh, at that night, I was like tossing, turning. I got up a little early. Huh. I went in my pajamas itself. <laughs> at the attic, it was very cold. I was the only one. Huh. I was sitting there and my hands were very cold and numb. And, you know, it was like the mountains were in a silhouette. I was like, okay, it's like 5.30, 5.45, 5.15. And slowly the light came up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the whole scene was like very beautiful, like rays. Mm-hmm. I was in my mind, I'm like, you know, talking to myself. What did he mean? Why mm-hmm. did he say most spectacular show? Right. You know, on the earth? And he said it with a lot of confidence. Huh. Very, that the conviction was something else. Then the door of the attic opened at 6.05 and he walked in and he said, oh, I didn't know that you're going to be there. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that you were going to take me seriously. Uh-huh. So he was leaving to Kaza on his bike. Uh-huh. And he said, uh, he, j- he had come to basically pay homage uh-huh. to the mountains. Oh. And he left. Okay. And while oh, going, he did not wait for the entire time? He told... Uh, no, 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 no. He left. He left. And he just, he just told me, keep watching. Okay. And I was like, keep watching? In my head, I was like, what could have happened? Yeah. And uh, uh, then I was getting bored, to be very honest, because I was like, okay, this is a sunrise. This is like any sunrise over mountains. It's beautiful, no doubt. Uh-huh. And I started waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh-huh. And then I was fiddling with my phone. I called up my mother. Uh-huh. Then I was like, okay, Divya, let's not just be fidgety. Let's focus. Uh-huh. I just started like, you know, enjoying the mountains, enjoying the sun- sunrise. Right. And I started like, you know, chanting uh-huh. my meditative chant. Okay. Shivoham, you uh-huh. know. And I started focusing on one particular cloud, which okay. was there over the range. Huh. And slowly I started noticing. This is this is very, very surreal. Huh. If you would have told it to me, I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> <laughs> but it actually happened. Okay. It's this mountain, which is in front of me. I'm huh. focusing the cloud. Huh. Slowly it becomes a clot. Okay. Then it takes a shape. And oh. before I know it, it's an ohm. Wow. Oh my god! I, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Obviously, because I'm blinking, uh-huh. and I'm like, "What is happening?" I know. And just to be sure of uh-huh. what I'm seeing, uh-huh. like, see, I couldn't even believe myself. Imagine, right. yeah. So uh-huh. I took a picture of it on my phone, uh-huh. and I looked down uh-huh. to see whether you know it is what I'm seeing. Right, right. And it was what I was seeing. It was an ohm. Oh my oh god. My- and when I looked up, it was gone. Poof, gone. I was like, for two minutes, I was stunned. Like, I, I didn't move. Oh, my God. Then I got my senses back. <laughs> and down. Like, you know, I just ran down. Uh-huh. Neck breaking speed. Uh-huh. I'm like, where is where is Anil? Where is Anil? Asking people. Uh-huh. And then I banged it to Prithvi. And Prithvi is like, what happened? Why are you panting? Uh-huh. Then I showed it to him. And he's like, oh, my God. I've never seen something like this. Anil knew about it. Oh and he was God. like. You've got to be kidding me. How would Anil know? That yeah. this is- and I was like, no, no, no. I need to get in touch with this guy again. Yeah. So then he WhatsApped because obviously he was on a bike journey. Then right. when he came back to Bombay, I pinged him. And by that time, Prithvi had already shown him the yeah. picture. And I told him, I asked him, I said, how did you know? Exactly. Like, no, I was just talking about the sunrise. No. <laughs> glad. I'm so glad that you got to see something like this. Yeah. Something- magical like this mountains will never disappoint you you know oh. never ever you got They'll your story be- also wow i got my story yes this is it's also almost like a message from god wow yeah and it's it's also a message from uh, mountains yeah. because i think they never disappoint exactly they they will always they for me they are like protectors wow they answers yeah. to my questions and that's why I, uh, that's why I tell everyone, you know, whenever pe- people ask me about my relationships with mountains, I think it's very special. Uh-huh. Yeah, I always run to them when you know, okay. and they were always there. In fact, when I my canoe trip got over, uh-huh. last days, uh-huh. okay, it was like I was getting withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> I was I just wanted to go back and hug them again with Aww. all my so that this trip doesn't end. Uh-huh. That was the beauty of the trip. Wow. It's a complete detox. Like I did not know what's happening back in Bombay. Right. I did not know. Uh, I did not know. Uh, it's not like you don't get network. You get network. But you choose to stay there. Yeah. Choose to stay there without network. That's true. It's beautiful. 
yeah that oh. was uh, kalpa so we had quite in fact uh, kalpa i stayed for a very long time so we had quite a few uh, experiences there uh-huh. there there is also a small bal ashram hmm. it's a girls orphanage which is okay. right next to the monastery uh uh-huh. I visited the girls there mm-hmm. and uh, first firstly where they were very very a- apprehensive mm-hmm. uh, and they were very hesitant because obviously they do not trust people easily right right and they are not like we're very very small girls they they're all you know they're even teenage girls okay okay so they're mature enough they've mm-hmm. seen life and they really don't like you know they didn't they're not open uh-uh. so I went and visited them and after some time they were like pretty pally with me mm uh-huh. and while going one of them said uh, will you come back oh. and i knew that i'm very time pressed right i knew i had to go back huh. i just knew i had to go back so i said yes without thinking and then i was wondering oh my god how am i going to go back <laughs> <laughs> actually made time huh. one evening uh, me dorin a couple of others okay somebody is birthday in the group huh. So uh we decided to buy chocolates. I decided to buy chocolates and then I was like okay let me uh, you know also give them a memento right. which will stay with them. Huh. And I bought them these woolen caps which I love which I can't wear as because I'm not a kid anymore. Uh-huh. Pink, pink with those barbies and <laughs> and we went. Uh-huh. And they were just so happy because somebody kept their kept word. word. That's true. And wow. Had, and I think that was one of the best evenings i spent oh, okay. because they were dancing they were singing they were themselves oh, and okay. uh, it was a very it was a very overwhelming experience oh. and I, one reason i want to go back to kinoris for these girls wow i really want to go back to them because i really want to you know see them again and tell them that right. you know there are people who keep their word right. and they were alone and they wore these caps immediately and they were po- <laughs> there were selfies oh my god and i think that was one of my most beautiful experiences in kalpa wow it's amazing so, yeah so that was about kalpa mm-hmm. and there's a lot you can do mm-hmm. there's honestly a lot you can do and if you don't want to do anything then also you will not be disappointed <laughs> uh, you can just you know camp at uh, the grand shambhala right and have the time of your life you'll be actually pampered oh it's amazing with endless apple juice glass <laughs> yeah amazing. it's always on the house oh wow thank you so much devi akshi you have been a angel i think who just come down from the mountains and who've shown <laughs> us the beauty seriously no you have to do this on your own feza and you'll have to tell me how what your experience was yes some day soon <laughs> and i really really hope you get to do it very very I soon really hope is it hope. if there is magic i'm sure it is here wow amazing then thank you so much for giving this beautiful magic out to our listeners as well thank you so much for being a part of the musafir stories that was yet another great episode of the musafir stories if you guys like the show please subscribe to us on itunes audio boom seven stitcher pocket radio or any other podcasting app that's available on ios or android You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We go by the handle The Musafir Stories. Or if it suits you, you could email us at themusafirstories@gmail.com and visit our website www.themusafirstories.com for more information. All of these links will be made available in the show notes section of the podcast. So here's to more traveling, sharing, and inspiring. Stay tuned for our next episode. Until then, happy travels and goodbye.